Hello, Stitchers. Welcome to Stitch Please, the official podcast of Black Women's Stitch, the sewing group where Black Lives Matter. I'm your host, Lisa Woolfork. I'm a fourth-generation sewing enthusiast with more than 20 years of sewing experience. I am looking forward to today's conversation, so sit back, relax, and get ready to get your stitch together. Hello, Stitchers. Thanks so much for joining us for the last episode of Blacktober on the Stitch Please podcast. I'm delighted to talk today with Aisha DePay to talk a bit more about the differences between cosplay and just the regular costume. Tomorrow is Halloween, and maybe many of us, at least myself, have been working on Halloween costumes for friends or family or for ourselves. And I thought that a cosplay episode would be perfectly timed um, for the end of Blacktober. So let's see what Aisha has to say. Aisha? Hey. Yes. <laughs> Two times is a charm. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it was, I was there when the issue happened. I was sitting in the room and I, I heard this noise. It was like, it was like a countdown beep. Oh, okay. And then yeah, it yeah. Cut off and it was like, all right, thank you for using Ringer. And I was like, uh oh. Like, <laughs> like, we, I, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, Maybe I could come back in, and it was like, nope, that was that's over. You have I, used this. And <laughs> I think what I I think that was my fault. I think what I did it said that you were connected, and then I said your name a couple times, and I didn't hear anything. And so I said, I wonder if she hung up or if I need to start over. So that's clearly operator error. But you sound <laughs> you sound great. Yeah, this headset is good. It's 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 what I use for gaming. Um, oh, but good. But what I had, I had done, like I said, I sat on it. So I think I sat on it and I uh, popped the, the mic part off. Oh, so no. I just put it back on with some tape for now. We don't. I, well, we're about to picture. see because my boys both play games, video mm-hmm. games like that. And mm-hmm. both of them seem to have the, the headsets should just come with tape because yeah. um, <laughs> they both of them and I, they weren't like inexpensive things but they are one of them has like a pound of blue painters tape wrapped around mm-hmm. it and then the other boy I don't know what I don't know what they're using to to hold these things up well thank you so much for joining today I do appreciate you taking the time out this episode will be our our this conversation comes at the end of what we are calling at black women stitch blacktober <laughs> and I thought since Halloween is tomorrow that this would be a great opportunity to talk about cosplay and what the differences are between cosplay and a regular costume and how you as a black woman have used your sewing as a way to kind of participate in unique and specific ways for your own cosplay and just to talk a bit well maybe can you just give us a little bit of a definition about what is cosplay and what's the difference between cosplay and just like a Halloween costume? Um, short answer is nothing. Um, Ooh. Costu- cosplay is short for costume play. So if you are wearing a costume and having fun, you are, you are enjoying cosplay. Um, so there's Halloween cosplay. Um, most people think of cosplay culture and they think of like anime conventions and comic book conventions and certainly plenty of cosplay happens there. And that's more of a cosplay culture and a whole geek culture that's around that. But, um, that word still encompasses, yeah, you know, you want to be a sexy pizza, uh, for Halloween. You are cosplaying, you know, is one of those 
you, you know, all the female costumes are just like sexy versions of regular things, regular items. Yes, absolutely. I think there was a really funny episode of the show Community about this. Um, I used to watch the show Community, and I think it was, it was about a community college, and mm-hmm. um, it was really funny. And they had this one episode, um, and this person was like a sexy ghost or something yes. like that. Yeah. And how like this was such a, um, you know, that some people get a chance to kind of play in ways that they normally wouldn't. But what's so interesting about thinking about cosplay and cost as costumed play, I really like this idea that there's really nothing different between the two. It's just that cosplay allows you the freedom and the flexibility and the imagination and creativity to do every day. Or as often mm-hmm. as you want, yes. that some people only reserve for themselves for Halloween or for just one day. Right. And that's, that's normal, folks. Geeks, we take it to another level. Uh, blurreds, we take it to another level. <laughs> okay, wait, I should say what a blurred is. Uh, yes, do it. <laughs> okay, a blurred is a black nerd. Uh, uh, that's me. I'm a black nerd. <laughs> yeah, that's you. Um, and it's just like we... Um, we yes we want to inhabit certain characters we think okay you think to yourself who's your favorite character and that character doesn't even have to be human but like something about them speaks to you and you're like you know what uh if you if i would like to be that this year or you know or this day or whatever some people even do things called something called closet closet cosplay and they just find pieces in their outfits, like pieces in their closet that just happen to look like an iconic character. And there you go. You're done. You don't have to do any more steps. You know, you know? Velma is literally an orange sweater and a red skirt. And you are Velma. Like, are you a, I mean, a Velma. Yeah. Velma. <laughs> yeah, Velma. Daphne's the one with the purple dress yeah. and the... Yeah. No, I think I like that idea of closet cosplay because what it allows me to think about is the idea that all clothes are costumes and yeah. that this is something that people have been thinking about, like scholars have been thinking about, as well as people who have been just doing this work through either in drag culture and mm-hmm. other places. Um, this notion that that your clothes are a form of performance and fashion is related to that as well. Like all of these intersecting um modes of being and modes of dress and apparel that all of that is a performance in one way or another and what cosplay seems to be to me just as someone who has participated as you know making um lots of halloween costumes for Mm -hmm. example it seems to be like that halloween is like the time that most people allow themselves permission to do it whereas cosplayers um and folks who perform you know, dress in more deliberate ways through costume cosplay and other places or other things. Mm-hmm. They just do it. They just, they're brave enough to do it all the time. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, some people, so like if you're, you know, into the like traditional like cosplay from Japan, right. You know, it's, it's, there are people who just inhabit characters every day, you know, they like, I'm wearing a Lolita outfit every day (laughs) you know i am a lolita that's who i am and that's just what i am and after that at that point is it a costume even this is like philosophical but like no but it's a good question if your every day is a lolita then i don't think that's a costume anymore that's who you are right and i wonder if when you think about cosplay and when you choose or decide to dress up as a character are you trying to inhabit the character or do you imagine it's the reverse that the character speaks to something in the performer or in the person that's wearing the costume um, that, that inspires them? You know what I mean? I'm trying to figure out like, is it like a chicken versus egg situation? I see what you're saying. I, it's definitely both. Um, I know it's individual for each person. Some people, um, like the look of a certain character and they'll just like, they don't have to know much about the character. They're just like, I love the look of this character and I want to look like that. You know, um, someone like me, I am very much character driven in like performance because I come from an acting background. And oh, so, great. so I just enjoy, um, being, so like my first cosplay was, um, was, um, uh, 
Mr. T. And oh, awesome! I just spent the whole night going, "A pity the fool." <laughs> you know, I like. I just did oh that. God. I could not stop myself. I was Mr. T. All Do you the remember time. how old you were? How old you were when you started doing this? I, Do you remember? That was eighteen. I was eighteen at the time, and I was. And so you cosplayed there. as Mr. T. And for those of y'all who don't. um know who mr t is please google and do yourself some favor maybe we'll drop some um information in the show notes or maybe you can just have some fun and do a little bit of research um but mr t was um and i think he's still around um but he's a boxer he was a boxer he was in the rocky movies he was in the show called the a team he was a and bouncer. he was yeah. he was a bouncer he was a bodybuilder was he a bodybuilder as well i'm not sure i know he did some photos with arnold so oh okay so well you well i don't know why i'm giving a summary of mr t you were mr t <laughs> you'd want to be given this information um but one of his tagline was i pity the fool and it was it was delivered in a very serious way but it was also pretty funny you know i just i just for a while i like for the whole night i just it, uh, he took over i did not even talk like myself <laughs> i was just like Mr. T don't like no drugs. Kids don't shouldn't do no drugs. <laughs> oh gosh, I remember that. Oh my gosh, the, God bless the eighties. I mean, the world hurt. <laughs> yes, a lot of promises of world of hurts. And remember all the gold chains he would yes, wear, I had and those. that, mm-hmm. and how that represented for him, like it was it was his way to tribute or pr- to pay tribute to the um enslaved ancestors mm. um that's what i had read that that was why he wore them and he also wore his hair in um what's called by some a mohawk um and so yeah i remember that very vividly and so maybe mr t is also cosplaying mr t <laughs> um and like i mean cuz he's created a character he did right and the character had a story and um and was inspirational and aspirational for other people who wanted to aspire to be like him or imagine his strength as part of their strength. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so what has been your most favorite? So you said Mr. T was your first cosplay. So what has been your most favorite or most recent version of cosplay that you've been doing? Or can we talk a bit um, also as a second question about how sewing relates to that? But I, I think I want to hear the answer first. I want to hear what you are, what you're excited about now. And then maybe we can kind of go backwards to thinking about why, how sewing is related to that. So I was taking a long hiatus from cosplay because I was just finding it so uh, unaccessible to me. I think that's the right word. As, as like every year I would get really excited um, to like each Halloween that came around, I wanted to like do um, Comic-Con, then Halloween and it would take me pretty much the whole year to make an outfit. Um, I think my favorite was the Queen of Hearts because that that uh, came after, and I'm I handmade uh, a felt crown and put and glued it, wow. hot glued it to a, a headband. But it just it came out really cute and. I started just like playing with the character. I didn't just do a, a, I kept on adding things. I'm like, it's the queen of hearts with like a Harajuku style with like thrown in the eighties. Like I just kept on mashing. Things. It was like a big genre meld, <laughs> yeah. a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Yeah. And I just like, I wanted it to not look like anybody else's queen of hearts. And she didn't, she just looked like, something different i had the like a tutu that again i didn't i didn't know how to sew yet so again i just i just like there's a no sew tutu that you can make where you just wrap the tool around a a band and i kept on wrapping the tool and made a really puffy i still have it really puffy skirt then then um it had the hearts on it already um oh that's nice yeah and i just made it i just it was a it's a it was a kid's tutu so I added more tool in the back and gave her just like a big, uh, poofy butt, um, like a bustle, like, yeah, a bustle. like a bustle, exactly, yeah, like a big bustle. And I had at the time I worked for Claire's, so I was able to get a lot of the accessories, um, really easy. And also, um, 
mad what was the what was the movie alice in wonderland, alice in wonderland had just come out a, a year or two ago so all of that stuff was on clearance easy to get oh, that's <laughs> Right. Yeah, so I was able to like get the, the most of the accessories, and then I got a shirt that had like a lot of frills on it, so it looked a little bit regal, and like suspenders with the hearts. I, I mean, I just really had a good time crafting her because I even like again with my hot glue gun and like no sewing, pretty much, I was able to figure out something unique to me that fit me that looked good and was just cute and i thought it looked cute <laughs> you know that's fantastic so your queen of hearts was a way that you were able to kind of build this really elaborate costume with very little or no sewing skill like no sewing machine was involved you did hand sewing as well as the hot glue gun the hot glue gun can be almost as good as a magic wand yeah it really can do <laughs> quite a lot it really, it could be like a stapler. Yeah. It can help to build three-dimensional objects. You can do, and I, one of my friends gave me one for my birthday. That's like mm -hmm. some kind of industrial strength. Hot glue gun. Hot glue yeah, gun. those things are Girl, serious. I burnt the hell out of myself oh, with no. that thing. I mean, I was like, I'm going to hot glue myself all the way into the emergency you. room. Um, <laughs> It was so hot. I'm like, I think they must use this to build television somewhere. <laughs> like, this is like lava. But it worked. It worked. It was worth all the burns. Um, I'm talking today with Aisha DePay about cosplay and celebration of Blacktober. Let's continue to talk with Aisha and learn more about how sewing helped keep cosplay accessible for her. So tell me a bit about how um, sewing and starting to sew has uh, changed your cosplay and how you were speaking, uh, we were speaking off, off camera or off, off mic, off mic yeah. um, about, um, about like sewing as a way for you to get into cosplay in a different way, like to kind of supplement what you were already doing because you were already doing it right. before you started sewing, but sewing opened a door for you in a different open, you know, allowed you to do something a little bit different. So I'd love to hear about that. So, so sewing is a recent development for me, right? I'm only a new, a newbie sewist, right? Um, but how I became, wanted to decide to sew is because, because of the cosplay, because cosplays took me so long and had, I had to have all these pieces. And again, financially, Cosplay is expensive. I don't hear what nobody tells you. It is not a cheap hobby. Okay. Um, so it's like, it became very inaccessible to me because it's not like I could commission um, outfits that I wanted or costumes that I wanted. And um, plus size. So it's not like they always going to fit me either. If I order something online or it looks kind of like it could fit kind of maybe <laughs> i'm not always sure and how's it gonna fit you know i'm I'm curvy so is it gonna be shaped right. all yeah. boxy and um if you buy halloween costumes from like a party city or something that material yeah. is just it's garbage it's, it's it really <laughs> isn't it though it's like was what was this meant to be what were you using this for if you decided not to make this party city costume like was it gonna be like a tablecloth for someone's table you didn't like very much like and i'm sure all of it like you know don't smoke a cigarette nearby because your whole thing's gonna go up and whoosh and sometimes they like I mean, smell it's... like a factory like they smell terrible like they just yeah Aww. it really does <laughs> It's 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 quite flimsy, and yeah, this is no dig to Party City, but I mean, I think that lots of uh, Halloween stores, a lot of these costumes that come folded in a bag with a hanger, um, the distance between the picture <laughs> on the costume and what you actually put on your body is so far. It's just like you know, they should just say this is a suggestion. Yeah. That's what the photo should say. <laughs> this is a suggestion. This is what you could look like. <laughs> If you were the if you put exact proportions if you of the put, model. If you were the exact proportions, if you put this on and um 
it put this on you can you can try but this is a suggestion this is a suggested styling but it's like i saw this um this sign at my hairstylist once and it says something like i'm a beautician not a magician (laughs) and i think that those costumes really do the costumes the marketing on the costume itself really does play on our sense of optimism (laughs) you know like (laughs) oh i really have hopes that i'm gonna get this you know, I don't know, whatever, this okay. sexy pizza, sexy pizza. and um, I'm going to be a sexy pizza. And then you put it on, it's like, oh, I look like a pan of lasagna. <laughs> you know, this was not at all what I had planned. Oh, no. I, I, I can't get over sexy pizza because I'm like, really? Anything, I guess, is sexy now. Um, um, no. I, okay, so, so, yeah, it just became so onerous to, like, try to make a costume and um okay i don't know if you know the character but from full metal alchemist a really popular show right um full metal alchemist brotherhood because there's two animes here and who um the the villain homunculus pride um has looks like a little schoolboy, and then he has these very uh very dangerous shadows that you don't see um until you know till the <laughs> until it's too late <laughs> for you uh he's very dangerous and i'm always a fan of villains like i just i'm i love villains um so i just thought oh man i'm going to do this i have the idea i can make wings what you know the traditional fairy wings instead of wings still right. i just use the wire because i watch some youtube videos and it's like okay instead of wings i'll make his shadows and then i just need a dress shirt and i need some men's shorts i was looking for like suit pants that i could cut into shorts or some um or some khaki shorts that I could make. And I had bought the shoes, the real from Payless before they went out of business. I bought the shoes, men's shoes. I still have those. So like, this is my dream cosplay. I'm ready, you know? And I almost got everything together. Got the wire. <laughs> I got, got the shoes, got everything. Could not find these shorts. And the way I find shorts is like all my cosplay. Most of them come from either when I was working at Claire, some pieces, or I would, um, or I would, um, go to thrift stores and find like something cheap that I could fashion into whatever. Um, and I just couldn't find them. I went to thrift store after thrift store and like the, the shorts were not fitting over my hips and I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't find them. Because, because these were men's because shorts, were right? Men's because shorts, in yeah. men- and men's shorts, um, men tend not to have hips like, um, like you know, curvy in the same way. So I could see why that would be difficult to find a pair of tailored men's pants for someone with right. hips. Right. Um, so it's it was just ridiculous. And so it took me. And then again, time, you, you, you realize how much time it takes to go to every thrift store and not just go once. You got to go back because maybe this week, you know, you might find it. And the energy, right. and it's just like I had school, I had work. There's just no way I could keep it up. Uh, so I get to Comic-Con this year and I'm seeing these cosplayers. And I, every time I go to conventions, I just love looking at other cosplayers, taking pictures of them. This just gets me so excited. Um, Deadpools are awesome. If you if you ever get to go to a convention, Deadpools are just funny. They just all have jokes. They all have uh, cool one-liners just before you take the picture. Like, they're just... I do really like Deadpool. I enjoyed all the Deadpool movies. My son is a big fan of Deadpool. And I bought, I think it was Simplicity that has a deal with oh. Marvel because they had, um, they have a Deadpool sewing nice. costume that you can, that you can make. So I bought that costume pattern in the thing, in the thoughts of making it for him, but he wasn't that interested, which was fine because it looked like pretty complicated and time intensive. So <laughs> yeah, um, I definitely think I might do a Deadpool one year because he's just a 
he's a riot. I love the character. I love the characterization of him. But anywho, um, I'm in, I'm I'm having a good time this year, and uh, I'm looking at a cosplayer. I'm in line for some other panel or whatever, and um, I said, "Can I take a picture of you?" She's like, "Yeah, the, sure." I took a picture of her, and I was like, "Your costume's awesome. It looks great." And she's like, okay, cool. Thank you. I was like, I love cosplay. Man, this year I was planning to do something, but it didn't, I just, I couldn't quite, <laughs> couldn't quite get it together. So she was like, what? As I told her the story about the shorts and she said, you can sew those. You can absolutely make shorts. That's, that's one of the easier things to make shorts. Oh man. You, shorts. The reason you don't have a costume on right now, shorts. <laughs> she looked at me like, are you serious? And I'm like, I don't know how to sew. Anywho, um, fast forward about two or three years and I've been, this has been like meandering in my mind. Like if I could sew, things would fit better. I could get a costume out quicker. You know, I wouldn't be trying to look for things, the time savings, you know, I'm just thinking about it. Like I could, I could do this. So, you know, um, so I end up buying a brother machine for like $125 and started teaching myself to sew. Um, That's amazing. So when you were teaching, I, I think so many things I love about this story, Aisha, is one of them is that you thought that this, that sewing would allow you to have the costumes that you wanted on your schedule mm -hmm. instead of having to do all this research and all this thrifting and waiting on the whims of whatever happened to be at the thrift store when you happened to be there. So it gave you a bit more control over your look in cosplay, but then it also could give you control over your look in terms of how things fit your body regularly, just the clothes that you like to wear and things you enjoy doing. So I really love that. I learned, I really love mm -hmm. this story about how, when you were at Comic-Con, a woman was just like, um, shorts should not be holding you back. You can make shorts. I hope to see you in the future with some shorts on. Yeah, it was funny. Um, now looking back on it, and especially like ready to wear doesn't always fit e either. You know, like fit is a, a challenge. <laughs> Just because, yes, it is. A, it's a challenge for sewing too. It is, it's, you yes. know. So, but you know, I I think. I, I sewing has opened up so many like my sewing as it's getting better it's just like I'm seeing all the things I can do short I'm way past shorts now <laughs> right my mind is like no no you know evening gown girl evening you know uh uh tentacles for Ursula uh uh like this I am like <laughs> I am like so past this <laughs> It's like it's unlocked your imagination, it sounds yeah. like, you know, all the things that the costumes that you thought might have been like out of your reach or, you know, when you have such a busy schedule and a busy life, you don't have time to run around to look for all these low cost options. And you, you know, and instead you can say, you know, I'll come home early and I'll sit down with this fabric that I got and I'm going to make it work that way. It just gives you more options to play with. I can still thrift, sure. I can still look for certain accessories and certain pieces to order. I can still um, sew something. It just it just opens up my tool, my toolkit, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. And that's something that I love about sewing as well. And I don't cosplay, but I am of the belief that all clothes are mm. costumes. And so very often on Halloween, I'll have like some fabulous dress that I've made, but it's also a dress that I would wear, you know, for mm -hmm. Easter or for going to court or for wherever I happen to be. Stitch Please, the Black Women's Stitch podcast, talks a lot about sewing. But if you'd like to see some of what we're discussing, we invite you to follow us on the socials. On Facebook, you can find us at Stitch Please. And on Instagram, you can find us at Black Women's Stitch. 
On Instagram, you'll find a lot of great pictures and compelling social commentary. In addition, you can participate in a weekly live Instagram chat at 3 p.m. on Thursdays at Eastern Standard Time. So follow us on the socials, Facebook at Stitch Please and Instagram at Black Women Stitch and get your stitch together. Hey, Stitchers, I'm talking with Aisha DePay about costuming and cosplay in honor of Blacktober. Let's tune in now and see what Aisha is going to be doing tomorrow for Halloween. Um, and I was thinking, too, about I guess I'm really curious that, again, with Halloween coming up tomorrow, what are you going to be? Are you going to dress up for Halloween? Uh, yeah. Are you, do you have a costume that you are working on right now? Yeah, or thinking about? I'm really excited. I want to be Amethyst from Steven Universe this year. I'm, I'm actually planning two, two or three costumes, <laughs> um, but um, it's only one night. So um, I usually, in New York City, um, in the, the village parade is amazing night for me. I love this parade. Um <laughs> Anyone wearing a costume can walk down the parade strip and just like interact with all the people in the crowd. And it's just so much fun. And plus, again, someone who's a a fangirl like I am, I get to see other cosplayers. Oh, you know, that was the first uh, place that I that's where I did uh, Mr. T at when I was 18. Um. I also did Storm. I forgot about Storm. I still like Queen of Hearts more than Storm, but uh, it was great because on that year that I had Storm on, I found a Gambit and a Jubilee and we took some pictures together. It was just like really great. Oh, that's amazing. It's a a real community. It sounds like it's a real community when you go to cons and when you go to the parade. So when you say Village Parade, do you mean in um, in Greenwich Village? Um, I think it goes goes pretty far i think it goes close to i think it goes close to 34th or 14th street all the way down wow to like almost the tip of manhattan down to fourth ave um and you just i the for me i have literally i don't even like parades like that because most i'm short i'm usually in the back of whoever's head (laughs) it's you can't, you can't see, anything. see it's cold yeah. I, you know this t- no <laughs> i'm tired my back hurts i just don't like the whole thing but the village parade because i can be in the parade and walk the parade route i love you get space you can like the whole street there's a lot of and because it's the village there's a lot of great drag out that night and you just see some of the greatest things um there's floats if you're into that but there's just a lot you know and i feel like i'm part of it i'm contributing to it you know and it's just just it's just a great night it's like my favorite night of the year oh that's fantastic well i will definitely put a link um to the info about the village parade in the show notes so people can check it out Um, and learn about it if they've not participated. I have family that does live down there and I've made a costume for my nephew who was much, Mm. very young. And I think they walked in the parade and um, he got a lot of good comments on his costume. He was very young. So he was sitting like on his dad's shoulders or something. Um, But he was able to like walk in that little part of right, you know, near where they live down there. What was he? Um, He was a lion. Oh, yeah and this let me tell you about this lion talk about costumes that take work (laughs) and i was i was pregnant i was living in cleveland ohio my husband was in law school he had a internship or something and i was working on my dissertation trying to finish up and was pregnant Mm -hmm. with my first and we had this house and it had this attic which i it was an attic you could actually use i had never seen a house that had an attic you could go up in it and like be in it mm-hmm. like a little loft. Now, the thing about it is that it was hot, it was so hot, but I had a sewing room, so I didn't care <laughs> if it was a thousand degrees. Um, so I sat up there that summer and I made a costume for my nephew who was about mm. two at the time. And it was so 
elaborate. It took me hours and hours and hours and hours. I mean, it really took a long time, but it was beautifully detailed. And so I gave it to my sister for my nephew to wear and he wore it. And then I remember seeing it in the back of my mother's car in the trunk and I had like a meltdown. Like, how did you, why would you put this back here? This, you know how many hours of <laughs> sweat to poured into this outfit costume. And so then after that, it was rescued. And then when my child was born, um, my nephew's, <laughs> my nephew, yeah, for this lion, really, um, my nephew passed it down to my, my son and then he wore it for a while. And then my, my other son wore it. And then I gave it to my other nephew to wear this one who wore it in the village parade. And then now most recently, um, it's with my other sister because she has a little one, but we're going to get it back because one of my nieces now wants to. So this costume has really, we, you know, I might've complained about making it, but it has been in our family yeah. for like 20 years. <laughs> so um, I really cannot complain anymore about this lion costume because it turned out pretty great overall. Um, so I think that that's, that's what he was. And I'm hoping that I can reuse it so I don't have to make, um, super some super fresh costumes but i'm going to be making some stuff for my nieces um and a couple of, and a thing for my nephew but no everyone else seems to be growing out of it you know because there's a big gap in age mm. between our family with the kids some are in their 20s and some are right. just turned four so well i'm excited about amethyst so tell me what you've got for her i know you and i we went shopping uh, when I came up there a few weeks ago and you were looking at these feathers and gems uh, and so all yeah, that stuff. I was looking at more than one costume. So for Amethyst, um, I'm going to order a wig soon. I'm going to order a purple bodysuit, which will keep me warm because I am, you know, I'm the type to just shiver. It was the slightest wind blow. I'm like, nope, I don't like it. <laughs> now I have to put Amethyst, she has to have a, she has to have a coat on. <laughs> Um, but it like amethyst uh is pretty e I think this will be one of the easier tests of like what I've learned so far, even though still new. Um, because she just needs a gray tank top that kind of comes down like rounded at the bottom. And I have a I finally found that fabric, that gray stretchy fabric. Um so oh, I know what what I'm get I'm using. I just need to I think I'm I found a YouTube video that teaches you how to to make a bodice a uh, bodice block. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna make a bodice block, and I'm gonna try to like get that fit right. Um, and then it's just about getting the paint, the body paint, to be purple. Um, which, oh my goodness! And so, how much body paint do you need to use? Just for your face and hands? Um, yeah, not much. Um, just I just the face and hands. I've done face makeup before. Uh, for for the, it wasn't really a cosplay. I just wanted to try it out. I made like a I did like half my face as a puzzle piece pattern one year uh, for Halloween because I couldn't go out for Halloween that year. I was very sad. <laughs> and so I was like, well, since I have to stay home, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess with makeup. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna something, something, festive. something festive for the, for Halloween. Um, yeah, I just love this holiday, but, um, but so I think I can pull this off. Um, if I can get some, what I use is like eyeshadow makeup and try to make a pigment with with like um mm -hmm. sometimes I'll use like face cream or a little bit of foundation and kind of mix them in until I get the color right and that's how I did my face uh because it's all oh, makeup cool. so it's all cool. stuff that would belong on your face so I don't think I again I have sensitive oh, skin so I want to make sure I'm not going to break out that's but for right. my hands I might order something that is for more sturdy you know <laughs> for the hands than, than the what would go on yes. my face so I feel like yeah right. I feel like I'll be able to make a pigment for my face that's just like moisturizer don't you know like that night no one can touch my face I gotta seal it with like powder <laughs> it's gonna be an interesting thing but right. 
the the neck i feel like the neck and the pretty much just the neck and the um hands aren't going to be that m much i thought they're like a little tube mm -hmm. can't be that expensive shouldn't take mm -hmm. that much if i tried to do something like um she hulk maybe right maybe oh, yeah goodness. maybe i need a lot more <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. that would be a lot uh yeah we're getting near our time, and I wondered if you would um, wouldn't mind giving a shout out to some other uh, Black women cosplayers that you like or follow on Instagram, to, so that we can um, folk highlight them a little bit. I I'm following someone. I'm not sure if you told me about her, but at Mighty Morphin Power Priestess. I didn't, but she sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, she's got some great. I think she even has a couple of videos. Um, who else are you? Are, do you like for cosplay Love on Tranquil Instagram? Love Ashes love her love her um i met her in person one time and she's just really great um she's also plus size she does she does she just she's really creative you know she takes the character and redesigns it to fit her but you still know who she's it she who she is right she'll make a character who has like a bathing suit and her rose quartz is hands down the best rose quartz I've ever seen. It's just, it's just the best. <laughs> you know, it's just, yeah. And is rose quartz a character yes. from Steven Universe? Uh, that's Steven's mom. Okay. Um, it's just, it's just good. It's just really good. Um, who else? Um, there's also chocolate covered cosplay, which um, I believe they're a cosplay team, but I could be wrong. Um, she does a really great Sailor Moon. Um, you can put this in the show notes, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, I will. And, uh, I will. Who else? Um, there's one called uh, Cheruby. I, I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right because I've never heard her say it. <laughs> so I might be saying it wrong. But um, it's like a a wife duo. And her wife sews these like full evening gowns for her that My are goodness. beautiful. Wow. So you can commission her and you should because these things are fantastic. <laughs> and they're each one is designed for whatever character she's playing. So if she wants to be a Wonder Woman. She has a Wonder Woman like evening gown that she wears. And then like uh, when she wants to be like Peach again, it's an evening gown, but it doesn't matter what the character is. She gets a full length gown that completely represents the character. It's wonderful. That's amazing. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing your mm -hmm. Amethyst. I <laughs> cannot you. wait. Um, and I can't wait to see your pics from the village parade and everything else. And I'm so thankful to you for taking the time to talk to us on this like very close end of <laughs> Blacktober. And it's like Halloween Eve and people are probably st stitching away and sewing their last minute edits on their costumes. Um, and so this has been a wonderful way to close out um, the month and tell us where we can find you. I want to make sure that you get okay. it in the show notes too. How can we find your um your page on okay, IG? So on Instagram, elsewhere? I'm Aisha Makes. Um A Y E S H A makes M A K E S. And I usually just put my sewing. I put a few of the the pieces that um I'm putting together for my cosplays and it's updated not that regularly. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> but you'll see some pictures of what I did. Well, I am certainly looking forward to it. And thank you again for taking the time. We've been talking with Aisha DePay and talking about cosplay. And I'm so grateful to close out Blacktober with you, Aisha. And we'll talk again soon. Thank you so much for thank taking you. the time today. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. I really enjoyed talking with Aisha DePay today about cosplay and costuming, it seemed an especially fitting way to close out Blacktober this year. Be sure to tune into the show notes that we have on our stitchpleasepodcast.com website to find out 
more information about the people she was telling us about. I will also be sure to include them and their links in the show notes. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Stitch Please, the Black Women's Stitch podcast. Let's continue the conversation. Come find us on the socials. We're at Black Women's Stitch on Instagram, where we have a very active page. And you can also find us on Stitch Please on Facebook. We also would love to hear from you. So feel free to email us at blackwomenstitch at gmail.com. There are three big ways you can support this project, and one of them you're doing already. By listening to the podcast, you're really helping us. So thank you for doing that. In addition, if you rate, review, subscribe, and share the podcast with other folks, that helps the podcast to grow, and it also gives the algorithm that manage podcasts information that will also help our podcast thrive. The third way to help the podcast is for those of you all who happen to have a little extra change burning a hole in your pocket. And if you don't have any plans to use it to buy your 20th or in my case, 378th big four pattern, that's how many I have in my top pattern drawer, about 378 patterns. You could take that money that you would spend at the pattern sale and give it to us. We are accepting donations at our Patreon site where you can donate as little as $2 a month, or you could buy us a coffee at ko.fi, and small donations are greatly accepted and appreciated. So thank you for considering that. If you would like a transcript of this episode, you can find that at our website at stitchpleasepodcast.com. And we also ask that you check the show notes where we have lots of additional information and supplemental information for what we discussed in the podcast. You can find affiliate links there for the products that we like. You can find web links to the black women that we've been talking about here on the show to elevate and center their work. And you can also find the info we mentioned about donations as well as our email link. All of that is available at stitchpleasepodcast.com. Thanks again for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you next time. Come back and we'll help you get your stitch together.